Welcome back. This is a real working 28-acre boatyard slash boat building facility residing in Stewart, Florida. It's ShipShape TV's home base. Ideally located, the complex is situated on the shores of the Okeechobee Waterway, which happens to connect the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Now once again, here's the founder and host of ShipShape TV, John Graviscus. Well, thanks, Buck. We want to real quick teach you how to rebuild a carburetor today on ShipShake TV, and that leads us to our next expert guest. This is Cleet Glasso. Hi, Cleet. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Cleet is the owner of Lighthouse Marine Supply up in Riverhead, New York, and your company kind of carries all of these different marine parts. You ship them out, UPS, worldwide. Uh, there's even this cartoon character about you. you you're the part man, okay, Excellent. when it comes to boat engines. But there's a lot of experience that comes behind the store. You've actually been an on-hands uh, marine mechanic for 30 years. Okay, right. you know what you're talking about. What's going on with ethanol in our gasoline to where we are getting varnish in our carburetors and we've got to rebuild these things and, and show everybody the float bowl off this, off this carburetor and show the varnish, okay, because this is crazy. Well, John, what happens is the ethanol will evaporate out of the float bowl and it'll leave behind deposits and varnish. Boats set right. for a long time. And, 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 and when you're talking about these float bowls and, and gas being in there and open to the air, that allows it to evaporate in the varnish forms and all of that. Air, gasoline, and ethanol are really bad combination, right? That's, that's for sure. Okay, what's, what's the big deal with varnish and, and the carburetor? Well, what happens is the varnish will end up in all these small ports and it'll block them or it'll end up on the needle and seat and it'll s stick the needle and seat so that the fuel won't shut off and you'll end up with fuel running out of the float chamber. Now when the guys uh, after they got the boat kind of into position they went ahead and they took off this whole assembly. Now there are three carburetors and that's because this is what a three Cylinder engine, right? Three cylinder engine with one carburetor for each cylinder. Okay. Now, what is this product that we have here on the table? Well, this is carburetor cleaner, John. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off all the rubber and all the nylon, all the plastic pieces. We're going to take the carburetor float bulb off. We're going to remove the floats. And then we're going to take the carburetor parts. We're going to put them in the basket. And we're going to put the basket in the carburetor cleaner. And we're going to let it sit overnight. Do you guys sell carburetor cleaner at Lighthouse? Yes, we do. Okay, so, so you kind of take care of all this stuff. Right. So, so the next morning, we take it out of the basket, we dry off the parts, and sometimes you have to use a little extra carburetor cleaner with a little air. A little forced air through the little ports to make sure you got everything cleaned out, and sometimes a little air to blow it out. Give everybody the trick that, that you were telling me off camera, okay, that is so important on the newer carburetors today. Okay, well the newer carburetors, the seat is pressed in. In the older ones, you were able to unscrew the seat and you could inspect the underside of it. Right. Because the fuel flows through here and then comes out through the, through the seat. So what we want to do is take a small piece of bailing wire and just push it down in there and just make sure there's no debris in there. Okay. Okay? Okay. And that way, that way, when the, fu the, way the fuel will have a uh, free flow. Now this is the float, okay, that goes into the carburetor. And, and, and kind of what happens is, you know, when the fuel comes in, it rises it, kind of just like um, the float in your toilet tank, okay? It rises and it shuts off the fuel. And if that shellac gets in there, like you were saying, you could have a leak. But you also need to inspect these things, don't you? Right. Because sometimes you get a hole in them. Right. Or sometimes the ethanol will deform them, so you want to make sure that they're in good shape. Okay. Is this one in good shape? This looks good. We can reuse this one. Okay, fantastic. We'll take everybody through the process real quick of how to rebuild the carburetor. Where do we begin? Well, first of all, we want to install a new needle on our float. And then we want to put our float in with a new rod. Gotcha. And we're going to put the floats back in the chamber. Okay. Now, I know we have to put in this gasket. And what is that called? That's the float bowl chamber gasket. All right. We're going to install that on the float bowl. What is this round gasket for right here, Cleet? On this carburetor, this is the top carburetor, and this is where the electric choke went. So we have to replace that and then put the electric choke back in. What is this solid looking gasket for? What's this called? This is the diaphragm gasket, and we're going to have to put this on the top, and then we're going to have to install the new the plate back on. Are there any other 
parts around the marine engine that are getting attacked by this ethanol and need to be replaced and inspected? Yes, you're going to have to look at your fuel line from your fuel tank. You're going to have to look at your primer bulb. You're going to have to look at the fuel lines on the engine uh, because sometimes little pieces of hose will break off and get stuck in the carburetor. How much are these carburetor kits? Well, they run from like $35 to $45 each. Where, if people wanted to learn about all the parts that you guys sell, where, where can they go to kind of get some of the stuff for themselves? They can look at our website, partman.com. Fantastic, Lee, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, right now, we need to take a real brief time out, but keep it right here, because when we come back, we're gonna be in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. We're gonna show you how one outboard engine manufacturer is shutting off all the air to the fuel system in their outboards. Pretty cool, we'll cover it right after this. Don't pull the plug. The boats, the tools, and ShipShape TV will be back in a snap.